Hey y'all, Dixie here. After using Gossamer Gears the two on my through hike of the Foothills Trail, I want to let y'all know my thoughts on it. To get started, I should mention that I really wanted the DCF version of this tent because Dyneema is lightweight, it's the strongest fabric in the world, and it doesn't hold water like nylon tends to. But unfortunately, when I went to order the two, the Dyneema version was unavailable, and as of today, it is still unavailable. But as the design goes, the nylon version is pretty much the same. It's just a little bit heavier and also less expensive. The two, as you might guess from its name, is a two-person shelter, and Gossamer Gear says that it will fit two 25-inch wide tapered sleeping pads. But typically, two-person tents are used by one person who wants enough room for their gear, or in my case, enough room for their dog and their gear. Regardless, you could fit two people in this tent. The dimensions of the bathtub area, which is the floor space that you will actually use, is 84 inches long. 48 inches wide in the head area and 42 inches wide at the foot area. The interior height at the ridge line is 43 inches. As I already mentioned, this shelter is made out of nylon. On Gossamer Gear's website, they have a chart that talks about the materials of the tent, and they say that the body of the tent and the floor of the tent are made out of 10 denier nylon. But then if you look at the instructions for setting up the shelter, it mentions that the floor is 15 denier nylon. My guess is that the chart is just a typo and that the floor actually is made with 15 denier nylon and the body 10 denier nylon just because typically a shelter will have a beefier fabric on the floor because it's gonna see more abrasion than the top of the shelter. Unfortunately, I can't really tell a difference from feeling the body and the floor, so if somebody knows for sure, just let us know. But Gossamer Gear does have the option of throwing in a ground cloth which is just a sheet of polycryo for an additional $11. Normally in the more expensive DCF tents I've used, I haven't needed a ground sheet, but unfortunately the DCF version of the two also has a nylon floor and they recommend you use a ground sheet with it. The two is a single wall tent, which of course helps with the overall weight of the tent, but it can lead to increased condensation issues inside the tent. So to offset that on either side of the tent where the doors are, it's fully mesh to help with ventilation. On the inside of the tent on each side at the door space, there is a pocket for convenient storage of things like a cell phone, headlamp, or anything that you might want quick access to. One thing that I definitely love about this shelter is that it comes already seam sealed. There's nothing more annoying to me than paying money for a product that I then have to work on once I get it home. The two also comes with all of the included bells and whistles like a stuff sack for the shelter itself, eight stakes, although it only takes six to make it stand, an extra tie out for either side, and a clothesline. I noticed on Gossamer Gear's website that they allude to the fact that the clothesline is included. Unfortunately, I didn't find it in the tent bag with everything else, but the first time that I set up this tent was on trail in the dark, so I think I probably ended up dropping it at the campsite and not noticing when I packed up the next morning, but I ended up using one of the additional tie outs as a makeshift clothesline anyway, just to test out the function. The weight of the two, as far as the shelter itself with already attached guy lines is 23.5 ounces. I'm sure most people will use the stuff sack and use the stakes that it comes with, but some people like to shave off a little weight by using more lightweight tent stakes. Some people might not use the stuff sack, so I like to know that bare bones weight. But if you take all of the other stuff that is included with this tent, then that tacks on an additional four ounces. Also, because this is a nylon tent and it is recommended that you have a ground cloth, if you go with their included sheet of polycryo, then that adds 3.65 ounces. Currently, the price of the two is $375. And if you opt in on their polycryo sheet, then as I mentioned before, that's an additional $11. Honestly, for a lightweight shelter, a tent under two pounds, that is a two-person shelter and is made out of nylon, this is a very reasonable price. My Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2 
tent that I used on the AT was over two pounds, two pounds, five ounces, a two person tent. Now it was freestanding and double walled, so it is a different thing. But for a nylon two person shelter, it's in the realm of reasonable prices of other shelters kind of like it. So now I want to tell y'all what I actually think about the two. First of all, setup was pretty straightforward. I did watch a video that Gossamer Gear provides on their website on the setup of the tent and I was glad that I did because the way it's designed, the trekking poles are supposed to be slanted once you get done setting it up. I still haven't quite dialed this in perfectly. I typically end up with one much more slanted than the other, but it works out fine. Like the shelter still stands and functions. So that's something that if you are just OCD, you know, it would take a little finagling to get used to setting those up at a perfect angle. But I think it can be done with enough practice. As far as roominess goes, this tent worked well for me, Fancy May, and my gear. And I actually had additional space because I sleep with my pack under my legs since I have a shorter sleeping pad. So if you're one person with two medium sized dogs, if you sleep with your pack under your legs, then you know, I think you would even have space for all of that. Also, I felt like I had more headspace in the two than I typically do in the duplex. And the reason I mentioned the duplex is that's been my favorite go-to tent since I used it. And so it's just real easy for me to kind of compare to that. But in the duplex, I noticed that when I sit up in the tent to pack up or do other things that my hood tends to rub the wall of the tent and I noticed that because there is some condensation there so I, I noticed my hood getting a little damp and I you know think about that but in the two I don't remember really being concerned with that or noticing that. The duplex and the triplex have a peak height of 48 inches which of course that's going to depend on how you set your trekking poles up but the two has a height at the ridge line of 43 inches so it would seem like in the triplex or the duplex that I would have more headspace, but there is a significant dip from trekking pole to trekking pole. So I'm just willing to bet that wherever I typically sit in the duplex or the triplex that I do have a little bit less headspace than where I sat in the two. And I'm not exactly sure the height of the exact spot that I sit, but it's just something that I noticed was different. The vestibules on either side of the two are pretty spacious. From the edge of the bathtub floor to the point of the vestibule is 35 inches and that's on either side. Again comparing to the duplex or the triplex, their vestibule space from the edge of the bathtub to the tip of the vestibule is just under 21 inches. So the two would definitely be desirable then if you're actually gonna use it as a two person shelter because then both people have enough space to store their packs or other gear in the vestibule space. But looking at it on the other side of things, as far as the overall footprint that the tent takes up, that is something to be considered because if you're gonna be out on a high traffic trail where you're at camping areas that only have so many spaces and you get to camp and everybody else is set up and there's like this tiny space that you have to squeeze into. So it's obviously more versatile if you're taking up less of a footprint. And I noticed that the two had a very large overall footprint when it was sitting next to the triplex because it looked like it was taking up just as much space, if not a little bit more. So I went to z -Pack's website and Gossamer Gear's website to compare and see if it was just an optical illusion. It wasn't an optical illusion, it actually is a very large footprint. Because it is a single walled tent, people often have concerns about condensation and you will definitely deal with condensation more in a single wall tent because your sleeping bag can brush the wall of the tent. But because there is so much netting in the door space, even though I camp next to water every single night on the Foothills Trail, I didn't have some big puddle from condensation or I didn't notice that my things were getting soaked and there is a lot of water on the Foothills Trail. I also like with the two that you can stake the bathtub floor if you choose to. It's not necessary, but if you just wanna make sure that you have it all taut and as spacious as possible, then you can do that. I very much appreciate that this two-person tent has a door on either side because 
it's just ridiculous to have a two-person tent and not have an access for each person because either you're going to have to have one big opening on the shorter ends of the tent to crawl through like a dog crate or if you have one door on the longer side then you're going to have one person that has to crawl over their partner if you're actually using it as a two-person shelter there were a couple of things about the two that i didn't just love but i don't think that they would necessarily be deal breakers but just in case they are for you the first thing is i don't like that i have to pay attention to where i'm putting my head when I set up my tent. With the duplex, I really love the simplicity of the design that I can just throw it down, stake it up, and once I get in there, I can go, oh yeah, okay, this side feels higher or lower, and then plan accordingly. But with the two, the door on either side really only opens up halfway on that panel. So if you're gonna be reaching out or climbing in and out, it's just easier to set the door up where your head's going to be and also there's more width at the head than at the foot of the tent so again it's not just a huge deal but the less that i have to think about after a long day of hiking the better for me i actually set it up the wrong way a couple of times and ended up just sleeping with my head at the foot with being one person it really wasn't a big deal but again it's just something to consider another thing that i didn't love and it ties into the same thing of knowing where your headspace is. You can't choose which panel of the vestibule that you attach and have closed. There's only one side that clips and it's the side that's not where your head goes. So it's like the foot side of the tent. And the other one, if you want to attach it, then you have to zip it closed. Not a huge deal, but with the duplex, you have a moon door and you can attach either side of the vestibule as you see fit. And lastly, the line in the vestibule that brings tension to the tent where you set up your trekking pole inside the tent, it's on the inside of the vestibule area instead of the outside, which I prefer, because I noticed that things weren't quite cinching down right or something would seem weird. And then I would find that that tension line was kind of hung up in the lever of my trekking pole and so i'd have to undo it and then go around and tighten everything down again so it's just a little nitpicky thing but that's just something else that i had to watch for when i was setting up the tent overall i really like the two and if i was going to go back to a nylon tent for some reason then this would definitely be one that i would consider i like the straightforward setup the functionality of the tent the roominess even though like I said, that could get you into a little trouble if you were making a tight squeeze. I think overall it's a great two-person backpack and tent for under two pounds and in a reasonable price range. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today. If you've got any questions about the two that I didn't answer in today's video, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. And if you are somebody who has used the two and you've got different pros or cons about it that you would like to share, feel free to do that too, because that could definitely help somebody who is in the market for a tent. And I'm only one person with one perspective. I think it definitely helps to have other people weigh in. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, and we will see y'all next time.